I'm Janie Gildow. Today we're going to explore what the colored pencil can do. So we're going to see how it looks on mylar, which is a drafting film and it's working on plastic. We're going to see what the colored pencil does on black. It gets really beautiful. And we're going to see how the colored pencil performs with watercolor and with soft pastel. So we have a lot of things to do. So I'm excited. Let's get going. Okay, square four is lightly trace the square on the paper, and I'm just going to do that with a piece of colored, or with a little bit of color so I can tell where it is, and then turn it over, and on this side, you can just barely see the square here, so I'm going to put this white paper underneath so you can see it. There's my square. On half of that, take a graphite pencil. Graphite pencil works really well on mylar, too and color half that square. I'm not going to do this real smoothly right now, and I just want to kind of work on this one, and then we'll go on to something else. Apply the graphite, and then turn the picture back over, and now I want to color this whole piece, this whole square, with a medium value color. So let's try this one and see if it works. So I'm just coloring over the graphite. Do you see the difference it makes? So if you wanted to do a graphite study on one side of the mylar and then put color over the top on the other side, you would already have your values established. So you could put the lights and the darks in with the graphite. And then when it comes to colored pencil, all you have to do is put one color over something and the change in value is already there. Here's a piece of Herculean. And on this side, I have put graphite. This is the graphite pencil. Turning it over, it gives you a little bit different look, but that's just graphite alone. All right, on this piece, I've put just colored pencil. That's what the colored pencil looks like. I turn that over, it's just a little bit more faded. But if I put the two together, let's take the graphite, let's put the colored pencil over the top, do you see what I mean? Let's move this out of the way. Well, that doesn't matter. They both show. All right, let me put the graphite. I'll just center it right here. There's the graphite with the colored pencil on top, and there's the difference. So as I put it back over, you can see how those values really affect the darkness of the colored pencil. So they just make it look much richer. Here is my line drawing. Here is my piece of black, and I want to talk about that black surface in a minute. And there is my transferred line. How did I do that? This one doesn't show up because this isn't the actual line drawing I used. But what I did was to take a white colored pencil. I have a light gray one here. It's the same difference. I have to use a light box when I'm doing this to see where the lines are. But what I do with the white pencil is just to color very, very heavily with that white pencil wherever there is a line. And then I just put that line drawing over my board and just go ahead and trace the picture the same way. And when I do, I get a white, sort of a white line now. The line here will be lighter. You could probably do that with gray too if you wanted to do it with a darker gray and transfer it over. Now I do have a light line here and sometimes if there is too much pencil showing, too much of that wax pencil, then I will lift part of that off too with my lifter so that that does not interfere with the picture that I'm going to put on there. And you can lift part of that off. When you are going to work with color on black, you can go ahead and do the white foundation if you want to, but I've done the other technique here also, and that is to start with some color to begin with so that underneath the colors I'm going to put on there, there isn't a bunch of white. Instead, there are light colors. They do the same thing the white does, but they don't wash out the colors I'm going to put on top of them quite so much. So if I were going to start working on the cherry, I need glasses to do this. If I was going to work on the cherry on the black, I would go ahead and put this dark violet down first. This is dark purple, 931 dark purple, Prismacolor, and I'm putting that right on the bottom of the cherry. I've already put some of it right here on this cherry because that's the color that I've started with. So I've got some of that color started down there, and then I'm going to go to a crimson red. Actually, I want to go to a crimson lake, and I put some crimson lake on here on the color. You can begin to see that over the dark. Now it'll start to show up some. I'm just going to go ahead and lighten it up. 
I really left that dark. And I'm going to put the same thing over this cherry. And the effect may be similar, but it won't be exactly the same. So I'm just going ahead and putting a little bit more of that red on. I'm not going to be real careful about what I'm doing because it's the effect that I want you to see. I've already got yellow started up in here and not a yellow that turns green and disappears over uh, when it's put over the black, but a yellow that shows up and sits right on top of that black. So as I begin to extend that crimson lake out into that area, now you can begin to see it lightening. Whereas it's not really lightening here, it would if I had put more white down, but if I had put more white down, my cherry would have been too bright all over. So now I want to go to my next red, and that's going to be crimson red. So I'm just going to keep on going up on the cherry with crimson, and I'm also going to put crimson right over the bottom on that dark color that I put down first. You can see that the color is getting nice and rich. It looks really good, and I'm working on a sort of a Queen Anne's cherry. Again, I may take a little bit of artistic license with it, but you can see the difference when I put the lighter red on over the darker red. It Some of the brilliance is gone, and some of the... The richness of the color just doesn't show up as much. Do you see how the wax of the water of the colored pencil wants to resist the watercolor? You just keep working, that's all right. The watercolor will go down into those little white specks of paper and fill them in, and you're going to have this beautiful color of red showing now that you cannot get with colored pencil alone. It's totally different, even if you burnish. This is still different. There's a luminous quality to this that you're not going to get with just the colored pencil alone, even if you burnish. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint that right on. You can see the wonderful, luscious color that I'm getting. You can also see the changes in color from light to dark because of the colored pencil that I've layered on first. So you can see just how much more brilliant this cherry is now because I've put the watercolor on there. So now let's go to the cherry that's painted. So now I have an underbase of color. And you'll see uh, right away the colored pencil looks a lot different. All right, I've got that much color on. I'm not, again, going to do the whole cherry. But now I'm putting on my Crimson Lake. This is a little bit darker red, but you can see now again the beautiful color that I'm devel developing, but look how different it looks from the other cherry. So things will be sort of similar, but not exactly. And you'll begin to get a whole different look now, or you can, depending on which form you, you which one of these methods you decide to do, whether you're doing colored pencil first or whether you're doing watercolor first. Here is colored pencil on black. Okay, here's the pair. There are the little dots of black showing through. The next step would be to, instead of that, first put down the pastel. And you can see just how this works. You can see what I've done. You can see how raggedy this edge is. So before you spray with fixative, it would be a good idea to come around here with your black eraser and just clean up that line a little bit. You know you're going to be able to fix that with colored pencil somewhat. But this now is that underneath coat of color that blocks out the black of the paper or the board and allows the colored pencil to sit on top and not disappear into it. So after you do that, when you put the colored pencil on, on the pastel, this is what you get, and there's the comparison. <laughs>